beginning at Powers, like Mrs. Schwartz shared, that um, she let me take on this project. Um, and we kind of met with people that had already shared with her their interests. The committee is a grade level rep from each grade, kindergarten, <coughs> first and second. All of the intervention specialists in our building, our school um, <coughs> psychologist and our school guidance counselor, and Mrs. Schwartz. We also recently have added uh, Ms. Kuswell to our team to incorporate um, PTO and parent involvement. And so that has been a good positive plus. Um, I sent out a staff survey to kind of see what do they know about PBIS? Do we have a PBIS program in our building? Some staff did not know of that. Some, a lot of the staff actually had did not receive any type of training. So that kind of gave us a starting point where to begin. Um, so then the team started brainstorming and we looked at some data. Mrs. Schwartz has been kind enough to share with me um, information as far as paperwork that comes to her, office referrals that either teachers fill out, bus drivers, where is the behavior occurring. Um, from the start of the year, we kind of looked at the first couple months of school. At that time in September, there were 22 office referrals, most of them being um, bus conduct. So that was kind of one of our main focus areas to work on how we can improve student behavior on the bus. Then one of our teachers a couple years ago um, created the Powers Pledge. You guys remember the Powers Pledge, don't you? Mm -hmm. And um, so from there we looked at the words that are in the Powers Pledge. One of our first grade teachers actually created this pledge. And obviously the words that are in all caps are some of the words that we focus on, encourage, responsible, respect. And from there we kind of created uh, a monthly theme. We decided, because this kind of started mid-fall, so we decided as the committee to have a kickoff assembly in January. And we decided to break down each month looking at the words from the Powers Pledge. In January, we started with um, Zero Hero. And that actually goes back because we were all kind of, we took the, the name Powers from Powers Elementary, what is your super power? And so throughout the assembly, we focused on the different levels of the volume. Girls, what's a level zero? Right, no talking. Level one is a whisper. Two, I call a teacher voice. Three, recess. And four is obviously an emergency voice. So we kind of focused on that in January. And we had um, some awesome volunteers that are part of the committee. We created our zero hero, as you see here. And she floated in and out on her rollerblades. Uh, identifying students that were sitting at a zero, just so we could model the behavior that was expected. Mrs. Schwartz had created a video that um, the students were watching where we caught students at a zero walking in the hall, standing in bus line, um, working quietly in their classrooms. And then we also incorporated the song, I Need a Hero, throughout the assembly, so it made it kind of fun. Earning tickets in our, um, with our students, we had an abundance of kind of 50-50 raffles, so let's use these, we'll start here. The students get identified by any staff member, whether they're um, a homeroom teacher, classroom aide, even the janitors have taken part of this. And when they're identified doing the expected behavior, they get to put their name on the back of the ticket. Then we have a prize uh, ticket box that they go and put their ticket in. And then every morning in the announcements, um, students, they draw four names. And those four students get to go down to Mrs. Schwartz's office. There's a picture of the prize box and then the ticket box. Uh, when our committee began back in the fall, one of the committee members actually went around to some of the small businesses in the community and we received some coupons from the bowling alley, Maggie's Cupcakes. Uh, the movie theater gave us some tickets, and we're also in, just in talks with um, Dairy Queen, and hopefully down the road, be able to incorporate more small business um, donations. Um, each theme, each month has a theme. So like for March, um, one of the teachers came up with using the song, When the Ants Come Marching In. Um, during the month of February, the theme was respect, so we utilized the song by Aretha Franklin. And then sometimes we either have the students um, do an announcement as part of the morning announcement on the first day of each month. Each month also has a different color ticket. February we use red, March we use green, and this month we're using kind of a magenta color. And then also 
There are character ed videos that are shared with the homeroom teachers so they can use those videos in the class. Some of them are like Berenstain Bear videos or Kid President that you have seen on YouTube perhaps. And it just kind of reiterates what's expected in their daily um, class. And here's just an example of their Hey, Kulu, do you have your library book? I sure do, Rock. I'm responsible. Did you turn in your homework? Of course, I'm responsible too. Do you hear Mr. Muscle say Fox and Sock, Crazy Socks, Day on Friday? Yes, I always try to be a good listener. Listening is other ways to be responsible. Oh, hey, Rock. Have you cut your clip on green this week? Um, yeah. I always pay attention in class. I made working choices and listened to all my teachers. And I use good manners in class. They call me Mr. Responsible. Well, I clean on paper towels in the bathroom and my table at lunch, and I take care of my supplies, so I guess I'm just responsible too. Hey Cole, remember tomorrow is library day. You are responsible for returning your library book to Mrs. Mouse. Thank you, Rob. You're right. It is my responsibility to make sure I put my library book in my backpack. I don't need my mom to do that. At Power, we are responsible for a lot of things. We are responsible for handing in our homework every day and making sure we put notes from our parents into the notes basket. And that's not all. <coughs> Yesterday, my teacher saw, said I was responsible when she saw me cleaning up my mess at my table and putting all my supplies back in my pouch. Being responsible is important. We even have to be responsible for our words and actions. That's why I try to use good manners and say please and thank you. You are excuse me when I am in the tunnel trying to get to my class. <laughs> So that was just one of the examples um, of the students participating in the morning announcements. Um, I think hearing it from another student is sometimes received a little bit better um, than hearing their homeroom teacher's voice. Um, some other things that have just been going, excuse me, going on in Powers, um, we've been encouraging small acts of kindness and recognizing that. We had a Grinch in the hall at Christmas time, trying to make a Grinch's heart grow bigger. Uh, Mrs. Baru did these um, different paintings of words of self-worth and some reasons we love first grade. Tier 2, um, talking about the smaller group of, of students, um, we do this what's called check-in, check-out. Currently we have 10 staff volunteers, which is great. Um, a couple years ago when we tried this, we only had one or two volunteers. And it's not just homeroom teachers, actually um, our librarian is also a volunteer and also is um, a classroom aide. There's about 13 students involved that were recommended for check and check out. And what they do is they go and they meet with that um, person that they work with, the volunteer. They go over and review their goals for their day, um, what's expected. Maybe sometimes they have to model or they have to give an example and then they have to talk about what they're motivating. What are they working towards at the end of the day? Maybe it's they get to read a book to the class, or maybe they get to be a helper with Mrs. Schwartz, or sometimes they even get some iPad time. Other um, things that we're doing, small group, we are incorporating the Firelands Counseling that work with children in small groups and appropriate behaviors, as well as our guidance counselor. Um, so just kind of reflecting on, as far as like the data for the bus referrals, since that was one of at least my main focus areas, was kind of reducing. Back in the fall, we had about 41 um, bus conduct referrals. Mrs. Schwartz, when we started this kickoff assembly, took a bunch of tickets out to the bus drivers and they got involved as well and they're passing out tickets and our last, in February and March, went down to 20 bus conduct. So that was a huge gain, um, hopefully, uh, in helping out the bus drivers as well. So what holds for the future? 
Um, obviously, we would hope, um, I know other buildings, NOR does their own thing, the junior high does like Twitter shout outs for um, recognizing students. So obviously, hopefully, um, building with our, you know, building the program up with the other buildings, having more parent <coughs> involvement and getting the word out to the parents as to what the buildings are doing. Um, reaching out again to the community, how can we incorporate what happens in the community and bring it into our schools. Um, another area that our committee has talked about, you know, a lot of things that have been going on in the, um, in the news lately, and mental health and dealing with childhood trauma. Um, so one of the things we're hoping to incorporate at least the powers is provide some sort of a mentorship program for those students that maybe just need to come in and talk to someone, talk to an adult, build that rapport with someone, because you never know what they dealt with before they got on the bus that morning. And sometimes the behavior is the result of that. Another area of support in the community, we have a lot of grandparents, I mean, great grandparents that are raising their grandchildren um, due to parents' uh, situations that are going on. So providing supports for them in the, in the uh, district. In the future, in our new building, because that has been one of the challenges, is obviously limited space. Some of the ideas the team has come up with would be like having like a VIP table. The students can work towards having and eating in the cafeteria. Uh, their tickets could be earned towards that. Um, some of the ideas that the um, from the student survey that we also did, some of the students came up with the end of the month rewards being like pizza party, popcorn party, um, even doing things maybe like those that earn as many tickets, maybe they get to do a pickup basketball game with the high school basketball team. That was something that was thrown out. Um, down the road in the future, having, you know, incorporating the parents, donuts with dads, muffins with moms, utilizing the older students to be mentors for the younger students, um, having the staff shout out board and doing different family nights. Um, the successes through this project one of the biggest successes I have found, I'm most proud of, which is hard in most cases when there's change, is staff buy-in. Um, I would like to say at Powers, I believe most of the staff is really bought into the program. The students are staying motivated and wanting to earn those tickets and produce the positive um, behavior. Some of the challenges, like I mentioned, was the building space. Um, obviously time, you have to look at this. This is not a race, it's a marathon. This is a project that take three to five years to um, you know, come to a close, and then um, obviously resources. And then this is just a, a quick quote that I found that kind of summed everything up. Parents, families, educators, and communities, there's no better partnership to assure all students pre-K to high school to have the support and resources they need to su succeed in school and in life. And that was by uh, the NEA president a couple years ago. Again, thank you to Mr. Stairs and to the Board of Ed for allowing me to share this. Thank you to the Power staff. I really appreciate their time and efforts in starting this program. And again, thank you to Mrs. Schwartz for mentoring me. There you are. This whole year, it's been quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for being patient students. <laughs> or two teachers from our third grade team, Mrs. Coleman and Mrs. Dever, and they have brought uh, two groups of students with them that they worked on a research project. They were researching animals. They put together um, a slideshow presentation. They used a green screen for it, and then at school, they were able to invite their families in and share out their um, work um, and show their, their families the things that they were doing and uh, the project that they had. So we're going to let two groups of students come up and do that now with Mrs. Coleman and Mrs. Dever will explain a little bit more. Um, well, thank you for allowing us to come and present. We're really proud of our students. They've done a wonderful job. Um, they work really hard, and they've really, um, once you introduce them to something like this, it just takes off. You know, and, and even today when we were practicing to come here, I mean, they were adding things last minute. I want to have one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. So they just really, I mean, they could keep going on and on and on. So they've done so, such a great job. Uh, we'd like
like to thank our district for offering um, great professional development uh, with Amanda Sears here. Um, we really couldn't do this without having the PD from Amanda Sears because uh, she really introduced this to us over the summer uh, when we did uh, the PD that um, was offered through the district here at the CLC. And so that's really what kind of sparked this whole thing. So we really appreciate her. Um, also, one-to-one -one iPads is huge because without the one-to-one -one iPads, we really also couldn't pull off projects like this as well. So um, the students use the iPads every day for a variety of things, but taking it to the next level and doing these different kinds of in-depth projects really could not happen without the one-to-one -one iPads. So again, we thank you for um, you know allowing us the opportunity to have those as well. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Mrs. Dever to give you a little more information about the project itself. So the children were presented with the project using a Google slide, which is what they were asked to do. And it was a, a group Google slide, so they had to learn how to type, research online, use Info Ohio, roll a book, and get facts that were um, just a culminating activity for our polar bear in the Arctic unit. We had um, done the polar bear book um, by Mary Pope Osborne. It was a tracker book full of facts, and they were just about experts on polar bears. So what better than to do something you're so, so comfortable on? After they presented their, made their, and presented their group um, slideshows, they were able to go with Mrs. Sears and present it in a green screen format. So you'll see the green screen put up back there, and the image behind them was one that they could pick. They could be have polar bears behind them or uh, the, northern, the northern lights, and it looked like they were really out on the scene reporting about the polar bears in the Arctic. So it became a really fun project. Um, and from there, we took it to another level. Anybody tell sure. that Mrs. Coleman? <laughs> um, so yes, as um, uh, Ms. Giovinazzo mentioned a moment ago, we ended up having a family tech share day. Um, so we were very fortunate, again, our principal uh, welcomed us to have that. And so we ended up um, having, we have 47 students in our team. And we had this in the middle of the school day just so that we could use the band room when it wasn't being utilized and we had a big enough space. And we weren't sure how many people to expect. And we ended up having 40 out of 47 families attend our tech share day. And, um, but we did have well over 40 people because some people brought grandparents or you know, aunts or cousins. And we had multiple family members from different families uh, that were able to attend. So uh, we were really fortunate to have such a great turnout. Um, and then of course, Amanda came, which of course, kind of pulled everything together very nicely. Um, the families actually, um, after the students presented to their families, um, then the families had an opportunity to go to the green screen and to kind of record their own little green screen projects. So even the parents and the family members got a chance to play around with the technology that these students um, have been working with for so long. So um, like I said, it was really nice to have Amanda there as well. And then she also was able to talk more about like her family coding night, which was coming up at the time, and just to have her there to troubleshoot or just give a feedback when needed to the students when they were, if they had you know, a little issue pop up with the technology, she could help troubleshoot that and just really just bring it all together. So it was really nice to have her there as well. So uh, turn it over back to you. I think we've talked enough. We really want the kids to go ahead and present, and that's what they did in their family night. They had a little, little group, almost like a science fair, and they were able to present to their own parents. Um, so I'm going to start with the team from the Dever Homeroom. I'm going to introduce Cecilia Majors, Come on up. <laughs> and Alexis Webb, and Gemma Delmonico. They were a team, so one person had to start the slideshow, then they had to export and share with me and the other members, and they had to decide who was gonna be the expert on one topic or the other, <coughs> and they had to compromise and work together, and um, it just turned out really well. So I'm gonna get off the mirroring, and you're going to, to get mirrored, okay. <coughs> okay.
Education by Cecilia Mayfield. Do you want to know about how to end a patient if you do keep reading? Polar bears are mostly around North America, Europe, and Asia, and North Pole. They hibernate in their den. Polar bears are land mammals, but they can't swim. Thank you. I didn't have a five. My sides are five to six, all about their diet and hunting styles. I hope you have the time to come on the adventure. If a seal appears, the polar bear drops this book of lightning. The polar bears grab seals as they come up to breathe through holes in the ice. <coughs> polar bears mostly eat seals. Polar bears can smell their food from 10 miles away from dead animals, one mile away from dead animals. They eat bumming seals, seabirds, ber fish, berries, grass, and stuff. Smaller people, people's garbage, dead wells, and caribou, and whales. Polar bears are in danger. If you want to go to the Arctic, join me. Let's go. I hope there's time. Polar bears need food. Their habitat is getting warmer every day. The sea ice is slowly melting. They need sea ice to catch food. Many polar bears have tried to swim to sea ice, but many did not and drowned. They need the sea ice to wait for seals and many other animals to hunt so they do not die. Humans <coughs> are hunting too many polar bears. There are only 22,000 to 20,000 polar bears left. Humans are giving polar bears too much of their garbage. Polar bears are trying to survive as hard as they can. When the sea ice melts, it is caused by global warming. If you know somebody that is hunting too many polar bears, please ask them to stop. I hope you like being a part of saving the wonderful polar bears. by Jim and Cecilia and Alexis. Polar bears are great climbers and swimmers. Their fur is not white, it is a hollow tube. Their paw is the size of a dinner plate. A bear walks swinging its head side to side. If you put a bear in a hot place, its hair will turn green because of algae in the water. A polar bear is, and has its cubs in the winter during hibernation. Did you know that it's against the law to hunt polar bears? This is our index. Um, my name is Emma Domonico. I love toys and I am an amazing gymnast and I'm happy to be here. Mm -hmm. I am Cecilia Majors. I have two sisters and no brothers. I am, a dan I am an amazing dancer. Mm -hmm. My name is Alexis. I'm nine years old and I'm the oldest out of my sisters. Mm -hmm. This is our bibliography. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and our team from Mrs. Coleman's class. Uh, let's start with um, McKenna Bosworth, Emma Huspel, Addison Smith, and Elena Moldapole. <laughs> she always has to correct me on that one. All right, so Addison, go ahead and um, get on your plate for us. Greenland and Russia. They also sometimes live on the islands in the Arctic Ocean. Polar bears live in the Arctic, not Antarctica. They don't live in groups except for the cubs and mothers. Polar bears stay together for mating season and split apart. Polar bears live in dens in frigid weather. They sleep on ice floes. They use their weight to not fall by spreading their back paws and front paws. This is their den where they live. Diet and hunting style. Polar bears have an interesting diet and hunting styles. Here are some I found. Polar bears gulp down their food and don't chew it. A polar bear's diet eating patterns rely on sea ice to catch their prey. Polar bears eat mostly seals. They also eat seabirds, lemmings, fish, berries, and grasses. Seals are the main course because they are high in fat and calories to keep the bears healthy. Polar bears are excellent swimmers and climbers. 
They regularly swim across large areas of open ocean to reach floating ice, sea ice. This is a polar bear hunting for its dinner and a polar bear sniffing the air to find food. The polar bear is in danger. It could die or get extinct. Do you want to know the reason they are dying out? Us. The humans on Earth are doing this. The government has put them on the endangered species list. That means that the government needs to help protect the polar bear species. Scientists also found four dead polar bears on the coast. We need to stop and use less coal and oil. Because it is getting warmer, sea ice is melting. Because sea ice is melting, polar bears are not eating enough. <coughs> they are getting thinner. That means that polar bears are having weaker and less cubs. Sea levels are rising. They are both seven inches. There are only 22,000 left in the world. 40% of people is why this is happening. I encourage you to help my polar bear friends. Read on and find out ways you can help the polar bears. <coughs> Turn off electricity and lights. Use less electricity. Burn less oil and coal. Walk or ride bikes. The fact about the polar bear. Males can be as tall as 11 feet. Adult males don't hibernate. They have 42 sharp teeth. They can smell dead animals from 20 miles away. Females can gain over 400 pounds while pregnant. They have, males can weigh over 1,000 pounds. Females are called sows. Males and females only stay together for about a week. Polar bears give birth while hibernating. All about the authors. Um, um, Addison, I love softball and pandas, dogs, and the color purple. Hi, my name is Emma. I like to dance and I'm good at it. I'm the oldest of four kids. Hello, my name is McKenna Bosworth. I'm nine years old. My favorite animal is a koala. I have a sister named Morgan and a ton of pets. Hey, I'm Elena. My favorite animal is a bird. My fed is a fax slide.
And this is able to go into all the different schools and all the different buildings, and we're starting to pick this up so more creative and cutting. Great. Thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to have you guys just do the whole board meeting in front of the green. <laughs>
to help pay for the swim lane fees for that at least. Um, the PTO, uh, Amber Still High School PTO, uh, donated $3,320 to purchase Google Chromebooks for Mary L. Still High School. And then the Coral Boosters donated $296.83 to uh, help uh, go towards some sheet music and music department purchase. So I would ask the board to approve treasure recommendations. Um, sorry, turn my paper over. 9A.
get ready. I'm so glad the community is here, lots of here staying, hopefully, because um, I wanted to discuss with the board real briefly about some postgraduate decisions that our, our students make when they graduate from high school as it relates to higher education. You know, so often we kind of have a, an idea of what we think our students are doing, but it's not oftentimes backed by data. So I wanted to give the board a clear data about uh, this information, and also it's something I'd like, if the board's interested, to do every spring to update you on trends and things that are happening with our graduates. So here's some of the questions that I'd like to answer today, and uh, hopefully the, the data will show and give you some of those answers about, for example, um, how many graduate and go to college the very next year? How many um, eventually graduate from college? Do they prefer public or private, four-year or two-year colleges, um, in-state or out-of-state? You know, what are our graduates actually doing? Um, it might be hard to see, so I'll kind of uh, point and explain the slide. But, on average, we have about 72% of our graduates going to a higher institution the year after they graduate from Steele. Uh, when you look at are they going to public or private institutions, you can see that around 61% uh, of our students go to public and around 11% go to private. So one thing you learn right away is our students prefer to go to public, uh, public uh, institutions of higher education. Of course, they support public education and so does our community. Next slide, well, how about four-year institutions versus two years? You can see that of those 72% that go to um, college university the very year after they graduate from Steele, we have around 39% that go to four-year institutions and around 32% that go to two-year. So we're pretty evenly split that our students uh, pretty much 50-50 as far as uh, four-year or two-year institutions. So that's nice information to have. On the next slide, it talks about, real quick, um, in-state versus out-of-state. You can clearly see that our graduates prefer to stay in-state with their higher education learning. Uh, around around 67, 64% attend uh, private uh, college in-state, and only about 5% select out-of-state. So overall, we're talking about our Amherst graduates. They are students that uh, both go to four-year and two-year evenly but they absolutely prefer public education and they prefer to stay in state. It's really interesting to see. This slide just shows real quick um, the retention rate of after students, after they graduate and go to college or university the very first year, how many of them return the second year? And our retention rate uh, overall is about 88, 89%. So we lose a few, few students who, uh, who after one year of college um, or university leave um, it doesn't mean they don't come back, it just means they, they have to one year leave for, for a year at least. Um, and the retention rate is a little bit better for four year versus two year, uh, but, but that's actually a lot higher than the state and national average. In fact, the state and national average for retention rate for the two year institutions, um, for the state and national is only about 50%. So uh, most of our students, once they enter after a year after graduating, they stay, which is good to see. And then just demographically, real quick, uh, you can see this, this shows our, our female and male um, graduates and uh, females generally a little bit more every year uh, go to college, university versus our males. Uh, this is just uh, tracking our disabled and non-disabled students. Um, don't forget a lot of our disabled students are in work programs or they uh, receive their higher education at the JBS, and so there's a lot of things happening there. And then finally, this is an interesting, interesting slide about our economically disadvantaged students. Uh, great rates of going to higher education, but not as, 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 as high as our non-economically disadvantaged. Um, one example of that is that's one of the reasons we are now giving the SAT to all students um, at the high school. Uh, versus having them pay for themselves to kind of eliminate that barrier. The thinking is hopefully a trend we'll see in the future is as more of our students, we eliminate the barrier of taking SAT, they are having scores that allow them to get into college universities quicker and maybe that will start to rise a little bit. So that's one of the goals we thank the board for doing. And I won't go to these slides too much, but it does show, I have, I have a slide for every year, like this is a class of 2012, and it shows, uh, for example, in the green, 70, about 77% went directly to college, university after they graduated. 
about 22% did not enroll. And just to kind of see that, as you move across, the purple there up at the top shows the percentage of students that basically never do enroll in college. Maybe they got, got a job right out of, of high school, or maybe they went to the military, but we see about 22% uh, did not in 2012 go to college, but in five years later, that reduced to 13%. So some of the other colors are students that finally do enroll, maybe not the first year, but maybe the second, third, or fourth year after they graduate from high school. And also the retention rate and so on. So uh, Mark, you're gonna go through the next couple slides. It's 2013, and go ahead, Mark. And I'll send this information to the board so you can take a little bit closer look and kind of really look at it. And then the last slide I have is just showing you the, the actual universities of where our students go. What's interesting about this, this slide is that um, in the last six years, we've had 1,200 students go to our university. Uh, you can see that 640, or exactly half of those students, went to LCCC. So about 50% of our graduates in the last six years have gone to LCCC, and the other 50% attend other universities you can see there. Kent State's another big one, Bowling Green, Ohio State, Ohio University, Cleveland State, Toledo, Akron, again, it matches what we talked about earlier, which is they stay in Ohio and they go to public institutions. All right, that's my presentation. Do you have any questions before I end? Okay, you're welcome.
I would just ask a question, not a question, on me. Typically, we do not play all of our golf at this location. Is that correct? Did you yeah. not do it at Dragon Ranch? Yes, I should, I should have clarified this. It's my understanding, and I should know this, and I apologize. This is some type of a tournament, I believe, that our golf team is in. Okay. I'm not sure if it's a league yeah, tournament or a county tournament, um, but it's not a part so of it's our not game. Our, it's no. not our right. golf team will be playing. So it's not our, our home course per se. It's just one time thing. It's <coughs> not all <coughs> matches will be. And I should, I should have clarified I just, Yeah, I was shocked by that. Because I can't believe they're letting us do that on a regular basis. Yeah, I, actually, it's a one-time event. I want to say it's in August. It happens right towards the beginning of the season. Any other questions? Well, I'll take Thank you. 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 Thank you.